Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. I'm Oliver Rennick. With me here in studio, Seth Rosenthal is the CIO at Academy Asset Management in Chicago, where he helps navigate a tumultuous bond market. Seth, great to have you here this morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, okay, so let's first kind of talk about the news of the morning here. We got a GDP print that just came in. A little light on the top line, a little warm on the inflation line. I think some would describe that as kind of one of the worst outcomes you could root for. Is that fair? Yeah, a tough, tough environment for uh, risk assets. Uh, right. So uh, and it's almost stagflationary. I think for us is, you know, thinking about, you know, it's one data point. Right. And it's the first reading on GDP. So at the end of the day, it really, to, you know, we're looking at the bigger picture. Um, and, and yes, that the GDP number uh, definitely was not not good at all. We just came off a pretty good year. I mean, surprising strength. So I guess that maybe gives us a little bit of leeway here to absorb something that's imperfect. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd look at the the underlying data. Some of the other data points. You, know, you look at the the employment situation still looks uh, you know really solid. So you know that's in, and that's been keeping the consumer uh, in a good spot. So um, you know there's there is some good things to to think about that that are positive here. On the consumer side, it seems like as long as we've got jobs, we can pay down the debt that we owe on credit cards and we've seen the spending numbers. We're not afraid to spend or take on debt when we've got the job market solid. Uh, when we kind of look at that compared to the credit side, is there an analogy um, it, that happens for companies too right now where they say, okay, we can you know, refinance, kind of push our problems out? Yeah, I mean, you've seen that in the, you know, the commercial mortgage market. You're seeing that in other spaces. I think, you know, what we're watching is some of the things, especially at the lower end of the, the income spectrum. You know, you are seeing a, an uptick in uh, delinquencies in, in commercial, or sorry, in, uh, in subprime auto loans. You're seeing, you know, an uptick in overall credit balances. You're seeing an uptick in in uh, credit card delinquencies and you know that's just something that is worth watching right it's not sending alarm bells right this minute but at the end of the day we we definitely are watching it how do you kind of gauge right now the risks to primarily the bond market but then also kind of how it hits one's portfolio as a whole if we look at credit risk uh wind down in the economy that didn't seem like a problem in the second half we kept getting all these surprising numbers then a print like today kind of puts it back on the table versus more kind of the pure duration risk, the pure interest rate risk. Which of those is the main driving force? Yeah, so uh, credit risk, you know, we've, uh, you know, cr from a corporate standpoint, you know, uh, balance sheets are in good shape. The, the challenge is, is that if you look at the spread environment, you look at over a longer period of time, you know, spreads are in the bottom decile, right? So how attractive is that? But you look at duration, you've seen it back up this morning. It's been, uh, you know, really interesting. Uh, two's north of 5%. Um, it, it could get interesting. And, and the, the fact that they've priced out, you know, yeah, we right. have less than 100 basis points of tightening through the end of 25. I mean, I think, you know, rate cuts are almost off the table for 24, but you think about 25, and when the mm. Fed does start easing, they, they ease aggressively. So at the end of the day, we think, uh, you know, duration's starting to get pretty interesting. The cuts coming off the table, I mean, we came into this year looking for so many, we kind of winnowed them down. When you see inflation stick around, even when the growth slows, is that the scenario where there's like no way to cut? Yeah, I mean, I think the Fed, you, you heard the rhetoric that they wanted to cut, um, but the data just wasn't allowing them to. So at the end of the day, um, you know, we're, we're just, we're in, a, we're in a wait and see moment. And, you know, you're already starting to hear people talk about a potential hike. I think the bar for that is very high. So that's not in, in the cards for us. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we think that, the, you know, it's definitely pushed out given the data we continue to see. How much would that kind of blow up people's frameworks if we have to hike again? <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I didn't want to think about it. But, yes, it would be, it would be pretty, uh, pretty draconian. You think about risk assets and, every, you know, all those assets we're thinking about, uh, you know, cuts this year and, you know, that being priced in, helping out, uh, you know, risk, support risk assets. I see that that could, uh, you know, obviously create a pretty, pretty significant sell-off. Where's that trade-off then? If we're trying to figure out where there might be support for a bonds, resistance in yield, I mean, when you get to 4.7, where we're at now, we get very close to our recent highs in yields. The two years been sprinting. But on the longer end, I do hear folks start to say, all right, well, this just from a return perspective gets interesting. Maybe I don't have a particularly strong view that I'm 
and I'm going to gain on my principal in the short term, but let me just lock in the close to five. Do you think that gives us a ballast in the Treasury market? And uh, how strong is it versus some of the inflationary forces that are driving the selling? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a like I said, it's a definitely a, a nice entry point, especially if you don't think that inflation is going to get out of control. And we think about the long end is, you know, growth and inflation, you know, as a combined and, and how that it, you know, that's really the, the driving factors there. And at the end of the day, as long as you don't feel like inflation is going to get out of control, which we don't, um, you know, it seems like a nice entry point. Okay, so as long as it doesn't get out of control, what if it just sticks around? What if we just keep getting what we've gotten, basically, and turns out inflation doesn't get closer to 2%? Well, then the Fed's going to be on hold, and, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be in this environment for, for a while, right? So um, being in duration, I think, it, you know, is, is uh, definitely an interesting place to be. So you can still just lock it in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, tell me about how you guys are navigating this. You come from a background of bond management, mm -hmm. bond math. I mean, is there an obvious way through this right now? You guys have a pretty creative approach where you, you're a veteran-owned mm -hmm. business and you have an ETF, VETZ, VETS. It's a fixed income, uh, uh, inco income product, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, uh, lending to veterans uh, through residential mortgages and uh, small business loans. Uh, it's an impact strategy but there's no uh, concession so uh, from that standpoint uh, we think it's really really compelling and and you, know, you talk about you know interesting asset classes to be involved in you know we think uh, mortgage-backed securities right now is, is a good space you know relative to corporates you know corporates are at the we talked about being at the bottom decile uh, you know uh, mortgage-backed spreads are, are significantly higher uh, you know above median and we think there's some room to uh, for that to tighten. So at the end of the day, uh, we're, we're, we think that that's a, a good place to be. So what does that uh, profile look like ultimately, like the credit profile? Because you are looking at uh, loans that have been specifically uh, made for uh, veterans, right? And, and how does that actually work? I mean, uh, would you go and choose the QSIP specifically? I mean, is there heavy active management here yeah. or are there baskets of uh, specific demographics you can target within the bond market? Yeah, so we're definitely looking at the underlying data. We're going into QSIP level. It is an actively managed strategy. So we're looking at uh, loans and you talked about credit. Uh, these are the the MBS are backed by uh, the VA and, and Ginny May, and the small business loans are backed by the Small Business Administration. So, from a credit risk standpoint, you have full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Um, but you know, our active strategy allows us to dig deeper and find pools that we think can outperform, you know, relative to the Bloomberg MBS index, which is you know what the strategy is benchmarked against. So, um, our ability to kind of dig through that and find those QCIPs, you know, we believe uh, will help us outperform. Uh, is there any? Does it find itself uh, skewed in any direction? Higher credit, lower credit, uh, higher duration, lower duration. What's the sweet spot you get there? Yeah, I mean the durations uh, call it around uh, five and a half, six. Okay. Um, so that's that's the target there. But then at the uh, the credit side, full faith in credit. So at the end of the day, um, your exposure is to the U.S. government. Do you see people using this as a, a way to take out their pure treasury exposure in their portfolio? Do you kind of swap this a little bit or uh, do you uh, slip it in between the stock and bond allocation? Where does it fit in? Yeah, I mean, I think it fits in someone's fixed income allocation. Um, you know, there's a spot within the ag, there's 25% of the ag is, is MBS securities. So, you know, in your fixed income, you know, just a broader 60-40 portfolio, we think that there's there's a value and there's a spot for it. And as we alluded, um, it's, it's impact, but there's no market concession, so you're gonna get market-based returns. Uh, for those that need to check an ESG box, does, is this like part of the qualification? Or it could fit, yes, Do you absolutely. see people uh, look at it that way? Absolutely, we're finding people that like that story, but also just you know want to do the right thing for veterans and those that have raised their hand as a you know to defend the country okay uh and as far as the uh bond side of it goes you're basically getting uh you're getting income you're getting a i would think kind of uh almost a, a way to get exposure without being just a pure rate sensitive play i mean uh the mortgage-backed securities generally unless you have like what black swan event they should be pretty high uh credit yeah i mean at the end of the day uh you know even if you look at you know uh significant adverse uh events 
uh, MBS historically, uh, if we're looking historically, uh, have outperformed you know credit or other spread assets. So even if you get those type of uh, risk off events, um, you know these you know MBS should uh, agency MBS should outperform. All right, uh, trying to find solutions in a wacky bond market getting hit again this morning. Seth, thanks very much. Great, thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it. Very good stuff. Uh, helpful as we try and figure out where to go when stocks and bonds are selling off together and Treasuries getting a beating this morning as equities under pressure.